you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the regular scheduled Tabor Town Council meeting for Monday, June 12, 2023. I'll call the meeting to order and ask for the adoption of the agenda as presented, please. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council adopts the agenda as amended to allow for the opportunity to undertake closed session items prior to the timing of delegations at 5 p.m. All right, thank you. Just for the record, we do also have Councilor Bruin online with us. So motion on the table. All in favor? Councilor Bruin? In favor. All right. Thank you. Carried unanimously. Uh, item number three, public hearings. We do have a public hearing. Item 3.1, public hearing for direct control development application 23-038. With that, I will call the public hearing meeting to order. And just advise that members of the public in attendance who wish to speak against or for the direct control development application 23-038 <coughs> will have a minute, um, five minute limit for speaking and must state their name for the record. Also must state if they are speaking themselves, uh, for themselves rather, or on behalf of a group or organization. All right, Mr. Thiebaud, anything else to add from administration? Um, we'll get Selena to come up, but I don't think we've had any public inquiries of any sort. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, to this date, we have not received any comments back as a result of our advertising for this public hearing. All right, just to confirm, uh, they, there definitely has not been any briefs uh, against for or against the direct control application, correct? Yes, Mr. Mayor, nothing for nor against. And would you like to add anything further before we ask for anybody in attendance? Um, I know before we sent out the advertising, we did have a few people questioning where our veggie hut had gone. Okay. And I think they were looking to see where it was going to be going because they've missed it. Some inquiries. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Is anyone present who wishes to speak against direct control development application 23-038? Anyone present who wishes to speak against direct control development application 23-038 a second time? And anyone present who wishes to speak against direct control development application 23-038 a third and final time? All right. Seeing none. Related to oral briefs, also, you indicated there are no oral briefs uh, uh, submitted, Selena. Right, thank you. Is anyone present who wishes to speak for the Direct Control Development Application 23-038? Anyone present who wishes to speak for Direct Control Development Application 23-038 a second time? And is there anyone present who wishes to speak for Direct Control Development Application 23-038 a third and final time? All right, seeing none, nothing further to add, Selena. No, Mr. Mayor, nothing further. All right, thank you. All right, as a result, uh, I will declare the public meeting now closed. And moving on to item four, adoption minutes, item 4.1 minutes, regular council meeting, May 23rd, 2023, Mr. Thiebaud. Minutes are in front of council for your consideration. Thank you. Any questions, concerns, comments? So I'm prepared to make a motion. Councilor Rudd. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'll make the motion that Council adopts the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on May 23rd, 2023, as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Councilor Favor. Rudd. All right, carried now, so thank you. Item five, business arising from the minister. R9, item six, bylaws. Item 6.1, audit committee bylaw. Mr. Thibault. We'll have Mr. Orwa come forward. Um, he'll provide an explanation, and if there's no large concerns, we'd be looking for all three readings. All right, thank you, Mr. Orwa. Good afternoon, his worship and Good afternoon. Of council. Uh, before you is uh, audit committee bylaw number 12-2, 2023. Now, Previously, we had audit policy and audit procedures, but with the new requirements from MGA, they had to be combined into a bylaw as per MGA section 145. So we've combined that policy plus procedures, and uh, it's now uh, a bylaw, and uh, this particular bylaw has gone through the audit committee as well. Uh, so before we proceed, probably if uh, there's any member of the audit committee that might want to uh, give any comment to the bylaw. All right, thank you. Councillor Shorson. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just fully support this bylaw. It's um, probably time that we um, moved it from policy to bylaw, and um, I believe everything uh, that was compiled in the bylaw is um, applicable, and we should accept it. All right. Thank you, Councillor Rudd. Yeah, I too would speak in favor of, of the bylaw and, and uh, combining it or taking the policy and putting it into an actual bylaw. And I base that on the fact that uh, we receive rewards for the work that John, uh, Mr. Orwood does. So I think translating that policy over into a bylaw is fine by me. All right. Thank you. Anything else? All right. So I'm prepared to make the first required motion. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that council gives first reading to bylaw 12 2023, being the audit committee bylaw as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried now, so thank you. <laughs> Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd be prepared to make a second motion that council gives second reading to bylaw 12 2023, being the audit committee bylaw as presented. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried now. So thank you, Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Council unanimously agrees to proceed with third and final reading to bylaw 12 2023, being the Audit Committee bylaw as presented. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried now. So thank you. Someone prepared to make the fourth required motion. Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Prepared to make a motion. All right. That council gives third and final reading to bylaw 12 2023 being the audit committee bylaw for the town of Tabor as presented. All right. Thank you. Councilor Rudd, you had a question? No, just oh. anticipating number five. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Favor. No, no, no. Was, he did not, but Councilor Beckering did. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay, so just call it again. Motion on the table. All in favor? We're all good. In favor. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, someone prepared to make the fifth required motion. Councilor Rudd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, make a motion that council repeals audit committee policy C-5. All right. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, moving on to item seven, action items. 7.1, first quarter financial statements. Mr. Thiebel. I, is it 7.1 is the veggie shack, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay, what am I looking at? Two different agendas. I'm looking at two different agendas. Okay. There we go. All right. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Actually, I have it here. I was looking at the. <coughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Item 7.1 is uh, moving to the shed, vegetable shack. Uh, Mr. Thiebaud. So um, we'll get uh, Selena Newberry to come speak to this one. This is, uh, of course, following the public hearing that we just had. And uh, typically, this is something that would go to. MPC, but because being direct control, it requires council approval, and so this is a document that MPC would typically see, uh, but now it's just coming to council, and it's not really anything different that it would go in front of MPC, but because of what it is, it comes here first, so Selena can speak to that. All right, thank you. Selena, if you don't mind. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, we have received an application for a moved on shed to be located on the noted property. Um, moved on sheds themselves are discretionary and then the use on this property as it's not in an existing building actually makes it discretionary. So direct controls come directly to council. Uh, you make the decision on them and unlike um, applications that go through the municipal planning committee, these applications don't have an appeal period attached to them. So that is the reason we held the um, hearing for today so that if anybody had any concerns they could come and be heard and you could take those into consideration in your decision we also did send out letters to everybody that is within a hundred meters of this property 
so that they would also have um, the ability to make sure they were notified and they could be heard should they want to be. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councillor Bickering. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. This, pro this particular proposal, is that located on the old vape shop plant? Uh, directly behind it on what used to be the um, water. They used to pick up the water. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor McLean? Do, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do they need elect access to electricity for this? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor McLean. Um, they will need electricity, um, and they will have Fortis put a line in for them. They will? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anything else arising? Councillor Firth? No questions. I'm just prepared to make a motion at this time. Very well. I move that Council approves development permit DP23-038 for moved on shed for produce retail at 5508 46th Avenue, lot 23, block 21, plan 1410557 with the following 10 conditions as listed. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Councilor Rudd? Yeah, just, just one friendly amendment. Sure. Item uh, paragraph four. Okay. Uh, when to third line down, mm -hmm. you have to insert the word two after prior. Prior to, all right. Okay, thank so you. noted, all right. And I accept your friendly thing. amendment. Perfect, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, friendly amendment, uh, motion on the table. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. All right, on to item 7.2, asphalt patching budget increase. Mr. Thiebaud. So we have Mr. Ramalahiji that will come speak to this. Um, I do know there's been some uh, internal and external chatter about our, our asphalt, I think, through the budgeting process and that sort of thing. And so this definitely addresses some of that. Uh, Raman. All right, thank you, Mr. Lahiji. Good afternoon, <coughs> Mayor and Council. I would like to ask council to increase asphalt patching budget from uh, 160,000 to 450,000. We have uh, experienced few def defects and frost boil last winter. The area that are showing in the attached map, they need immediate uh, repair. Uh, and we can't just add coal mix to it anymore. It's just past that point. Uh, this project is not a mill and overlay. The crew will be removing the asphalt to repair the base. And they, they need to dig it up 300 to 400 millimeter to place a geotextile fabric, then fill it back up with a three quarter inch crushed concrete and top it up with a gravel and 75 millimeter asphalt. The approximate cost of this area is about 450000 and uh, the budget, 2023 asphalt patching budget is 160000 The additional fund requested is 290000 So is there any question that I can answer? All right, thank you. Councillor Rudd. Yeah, just uh, for clar clarification, this, this budget that, uh, does not include, the 160 or the 450 does not include the, the, the path around the golf course? No, that's a whole separate different. Yeah, and that's yeah. been approved and the money's there and that's going ahead? Yes, that is a different project. <coughs> thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Councillor Firth? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, through to Mr. Lahiji. Um, is this significantly more than other years? This year we had a very hard winter and we had a lot of movement in our asphalt. I don't know if you guys experienced it. And therefore, it caused quite a bit of damage. And I would like to fix those damages before it gets worse. And we lose the asphalt, then we have to go back to gravel. All right, thank you. Councillor uh, Sorensen. Sorry, sure. uh, follow-up question. Um, yeah, I certainly agree with that, <laughs> that logic. Um, but. Uh, you mentioned cold mix. That's what's used to fix potholes? Yes. Right now, in some points, we have used cold
hole makes. You can fill those holes up until I come here and I'll fill them up. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's potholes that are outside of this map, those will still be taken care of with cold mix. Is that? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so do you think that foreseeably this is going to be the trend going forward that we're going to have to spend more than $160,000 on road repair or this is just a bad year? Like what do you think is going to happen? Like we should increase the budget permanently or just this year it was bad and so we're just kind of taking care of it? <laughs> this will come <laughs> we have done a master plan infrastructure master plan and in that new infrastructure master plan it indicated that we have to raise the budget and uh, yes it will 100% have to be increased all right, thank you, Councillor Schwartz. I had missed you there. I already shut the light off, unfortunately. <laughs> Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I know I was bumped accordingly. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I fully support this, and I think um, that we do need to increase the budget just due to maybe some repairs that um, kind of need to be done and dealt with. So does this increase fully... Um, alleviate all the immediate um, repairs that are needed for our roadways. I'm catching you. <laughs> I picked the worst of the worst. <laughs> okay. And uh, the one that, I, that our crew can handle. Uh, this is done up by our crew. Uh, we are not going outside. All right, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Becker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hiji, uh, do you anticipate an in increase in the asphalt cost product itself compared to uh, last year, for example? Do you anticipate an increase in cost, or, or don't you know? At this moment, I don't see an increase. Oh, you don't? No. Oh. No, for this project, this particular project. I'm not talking about anything no, no, else. No. I'm just talking yeah. about this project. Yeah. I'm not anticipating. I, th I think if I'm understanding, you're comparing to what last year was. Yeah. Yes. Like okay. If, 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 if asphalt was three bucks a cubic foot last year, how, is it still three bucks or is it three fifty or whatever? Whatever the number might be. That's my question. Yeah, I'm not. We have our number already. Okay. So is it higher than last year or? We, it's uh, as I recall, it was a little bit higher than last year. All right, thank you. And just uh, so this initial $160,000, Raman, was uh, that was your mark for a variety of areas. This is a new, new areas that has become <coughs> problematic and more serious, correct? We get a budget of around, uh, about $160,000 for asphalt patching. Right, and these yeah. cover our utility digs also, which is okay. included at that $160,000. But this year, we have extra, we need to spend extra to come up. Right, all right. Bring it up to that. The only other question I had was uh, there was an area uh, off 56th Avenue in the 4300 block area. I'm not sure, is that alley area, an alley location? Or it's not, it's not real clear. It doesn't look like it's a street per se, but it's an L shaped type street. Uh, that looks right. This yeah. one is a back alley. That is a back and alley. And that back alley. The first three houses, they get flooded every time it rains. So right now, uh, we cut a portion of the asphalt to let the water go, and I would like to repair it this year so these people are not getting flooded. So you're gonna, you have to dig up the whole alley and re, yes. redo the, yes. uh, uh, the base, etc., yes. and then repave. Yeah, the way that it's sitting is not working. And it needs to be reworked. So, and I would like to have that done before. I mean, it was supposed to be done before the rain. So hopefully, we'll get it done before the rain. So that was was that initially on the original uh, 160 portion? 
or was this part of the emergent piece? In a 1 to 60 portion, it was smaller, but then when we got into it, I okay. just saw that You've added that to is it. not going to happen. Okay, but so this needs to be done. Better to do all yes. rather than yes. bits and pieces. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just to clarify on this diagram, it doesn't look like the whole alley is being replaced, just a portion of it. So, yes, a por just the behind portion. Behind those three houses and where it turns down, like if you drive through, you'll see that between the two houses, there are depression, quite a deep depression, which they need to be repaired. And as I said, those three houses on the east side, they get flooded. Every okay. time it rains, they, they get flooded, and I want it to stop. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Councillor Broon, did you have any questions at all? None at all. Okay, perfect, thank you. Any other questions arising? So I'm prepared to make a motion, Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make uh, the motion that council directs administration to allocate an additional amount of $290,000 from operating reserves to offset the increase in cost of asphalt patching work. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Carried now. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7.3, Economic Development Resource Collaboration. Mr. Tebow. So I'll get to speak to this one. Uh, this shouldn't be brand new news. We have talked about this a couple of times. The MD did come forward with an official request to um, look and see if we can maybe get ourselves a um, professional economic development resource. So uh, we've gone back and forth. This is a collaborative effort. So sort of 50-50 split of time, split of, um, of money and the MD would be the managing partner of this particular um, trial. And it is a three-year term that we're trialing for, and, and it would be an external hire that we would be uh, looking for. So uh, it, it it's sort of like, I guess, a Trevor Lewington of the Tabor and MD area. We're, we're trying to get someone with that level of, of professionalism to help with the agri-food corridor. We don't want to We don't want to have things slip past us that that someone with a, you know, much smarter than me in that area could, could help us look after. It would also um, be a bit of a, of a mentor for our Amy Allred economic development person who's quite looking forward to someone, if, if this were to pass, um, that could help her navigate through the economic development world. So, so the ask is in front of you. It's a, a $25,000 allocation to the 2023 budget. We were figuring that we, when I say we as Arlos and I, we're figuring that we'd probably could have someone on board by end of August, start of September. Um, so that will look after this year. And then a $50,000 um, budget increase um, for the 2024 budget and the 2025 budget. So we're anticipating about $100,000. And the MD is doing the same and has already passed a $50,000 uh, motion to look after half of this. So I put that to council and let me know what we think. All right. Uh, questions? Yeah. Sure. Councilor Bruin, sure. Uh, I think it's uh, overall it's a good plan, but I'm a little, a little afraid we maybe let the uh, fox in the hen house. Like if a big plan's coming to to look at this area, the MD would probably, you know, how do we keep them from not choosing the tower and taper, or for them to choose the tower and taper? Like Mr. he's working for the MD or managed by the MD. How do we control? Like, if they get all the projects, we're not getting anything. That's what concerns me a little bit. Yeah, so the the idea, uh, Councillor Bruin, is for it to be a, a collaborative effort. Uh, this person would be, in our case, on our side, would be directly reportable to me 50% uh, of the time, 50% of the activity. Um, the mandate that gets laid out for this person will be fairly clear in that regard. Um, Places will choose, I guess, where places choose, but it is supposed to be for the entire area. Um, so benefits would be had by both parties. I, I do understand what you're saying, um, but the idea is it would be a shared resource, and, and Arlos and I have yet to lay out the actual job description, if in fact this goes forward, but um, 
it was their initiative, so I thought managing partner, we can only have one person give this person a check. And so someone's got to be the managing partner. And it was their initiative, so I thought it would be okay if they'd be the managing partner. But that's, you know, certainly all up for discussion, too. I find it interesting. Councilor Burton, go ahead. No, sorry, carry on. I just, uh, just concerns me a little bit, like the MDs, great people and all that, but we want to drive our tax base here in the town and, and by inviting businesses into the town instead of the MD area. And well, I'm not 100% in favor of this, but it may be a good thing. All right. Thank you, Councilor Firth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had a question about um, is it a contractor? position or is it or will they be an actual employee of the town of Tabor and the MD of Tabor? The intention is they'd be a contracted position. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councilor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just also had a question. So this person is going to be um, very knowledgeable on what's offered here. Um, just being on the L Economic Development Committee, um, we I have talked with the MD, like their partners in that committee as well, and we've learned through other people that sometimes things go by the wayside from us because we weren't even aware that certain businesses were looking for certain things, and we could offer, you know, to potential investors, and so I was just curious to know that they would be up to snuff on what what's available here and in this area so that we can attract those kind of investments. Yep, good, good question. Uh, I'd say that uh, the idea of having this person specifically for the town of Tabor and the MD of Tabor is to accomplish that. Right now, we rely on you know the self girls of the world to have something our, come our direction, or or economic left bridge, and and you know the various strands or strains of things. But right now, it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a fairly busy time for the agri food corridor and get a person specific to us, I feel that we may miss those opportunities. So this person is going to be versed in that area and they're going to be in the local area is the idea and that they're going to be boots on the ground and, and ears uh, out there for us for this particular area and touch base with all those other entities, the self grows and the economic left bridge and they'll be the face for uh, Tabor and Municipal District to look after our specific interests. And things will naturally fall where they fall. Some, some places are going to want to have services which we can offer, and the MD can offer as many in the way of services for, you know, utility type services. So I think, you know, back to a bit of Jack Bruins, uh, Councilman Bruins' concern, um, things will naturally probably fall out where they would be best to land, um, and it's beneficial for both sides, I think. All right, thank you, Councilor Shorten. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I would fully support this. Um, it's about collaboration, and we're partners in literally almost everything that we do and you know a win for the MD is also a win for the town and vice versa so I'd be in favor of this. All right thank you. Councillor Rudd? Yeah, also speaking in support so what what kind of shape is our um, prospectus in? I mean I think that when, when you're speaking about is this fellow going or gal going to know what's going on here so I know we've had discussion about prospectus uh, for the town if we got one up to date that's in going to point everybody in the right direction. And I've seen the results from South Grow, some of the uh, initiatives that they've, they've got going and the, and the, and the volume and, and the varied uh, inquiries that they get about economic opportunity in, in the area. And it's uh, pretty impressive. So that it, it, it's good fishing right now. So what about our perspectives? Um, there was one done before my arrival. That's probably still what's available on the economic development portion of the Town Tabor's website. Um, in addition to that, this person we're hoping is going to help draw from what exists through the self grows through the economic development. They will be someone who's in contact with the Trevor Lewingtons of of the world um, of Southern Alberta, and um, can hopefully grow it from there. We we just we know we don't have the expertise in house, and so this would help us achieve that as well. All right, thank you. Uh yeah, overall, just to reiterate, I would also be speaking in favor of this motion. Possibility that uh, I believe it's win-win as well, and because it's collaborative, and we've done other very successful collaborative arrangements with the MD, so I think uh, this uh, is no different. It has some uh, great possibilities for both uh, the MD of Tabor and the town of Tabor 
to continue to collaborate and uh, continue to have successful projects as such. Councillor Beckering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Prepare to make a motion. Absolutely. May I say one thing first? No. <laughs> ah. All right, Garth. Councillor Bruin. <laughs> um, I'm picking up what you're all laying down there, but we say the town of Tabor and the MD of Tabor. Don't forget the MD of Tabor includes Vauxhall, Enchant, Grassy Lake, all the other small villages and almost towns that want to get uh, uh, development in their areas. So there's kind of five to one, or the odds are, already, are against us on this. So, <laughs> sounds great, but I've, uh, history could repeat itself with this. So I'm a little leery. All right, thank you. Councillor Beckering? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm prepared to make the motion then that Council directs administration to add $25,000 to the 2023 operating budget from operating reserves and to approve the addition of $50,000 to the 24, 2024 and 2025 and 50000 to the 2025 operating budget in support of the hiring of a professional economic development resource to be shared 50% of the time between the MD of Tabor and the town of Tabor for a three-year term position. All right, thank you most on the table. Any further discussion? Councillor Becker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Speaking in favor of the motion, <laughs> Uh, I, I, I can see uh, Council Brood's concern, <clears throat> but to me, it's worth a try. You know, and contracts are always made to be broken anyway. So if it looks like there's a severe conflict of something, you can always terminate the contract on a moment's notice. So I'm not too afraid of that, Mr. Mayor, and I think our CAO will, will uh, keep guard over that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Rudd. Yeah, speaking in favor as well, Mr. Mayor. I think that, um, <clears throat> as I heard from Mr. Kibo, the they're going to develop some uh, a framework to how this is going to work. And uh, so I, I imagine being built into that would be some sort of decision making process with equal inputs. And uh, so I, I, I think that I think that's a founding document then will be create a solid base to kind of allay these fears that I mean, you know, Ms. Uh, Council Bruin is, is expressing what what's in the back of everyone's mind anyway. So uh, but but I think, uh, you know, the Going ahead with it outweighs uh, installing the thing right now. And that's dependent, in my view, on the uh, type of agreement we draw up and look after our interests. And thank you, Mr. Keeble, right. for doing that. Thank you. Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just uh, when I attended the Economic Development Association annual conference, I do find that we are lacking. Um, and we, if we don't jump on this bandwagon of the acre food corridor, we um, will be missing a lot of opportunities, so I can see the benefit of this uh, economic development um, office or, or resource. All right, thank you. Once again, we do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Reluctantly in favor. All right. <laughs> Carry it now, thank you. All right, on to item 7.4, first quarter financial statements, Mr. Thiebaud. Uh, we'll have Mr. Orwell come back to the podium and give us the what for. Thank you, Mr. Orwell. Thank you very much again, members of council. So again, before you is uh, first quarter financial statements, and uh, there is uh, nothing much. Uh, normally around this time, I, I don't like going really deep into the financials because it's just the first three months of the year. And uh, these particular statements, uh, we went through the audit committee again, and... Uh, I like giving the audit committee members uh, to comment so that I don't repeat the same things. Maybe I could hand it over to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Beckman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, as Mr. Orwell said, the, com uh, the audit committee met last week. <laughs> Councillor Sorensen, myself, and, and <laughs> Councillor Firth in place. <laughs> Mayor, because he was sleeping in or something. I don't know. <laughs> but conference, yeah, conference. Yeah. Well, we had a good meeting. Mr. Over made an excellent presentation. The only comment I will make is that our investments are doing very well in relation to previous years. Very, very well. So we surpassed uh, the first quarter. Surpassed return. Surpassed the whole year budget already. So we're, doing, we're way ahead of the game. So that's good. Spend money, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, oh. Councilor McLean. Sorry, I just have one question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have one question. So we're putting 
two million dollars into reserves, but yet we're like under budget by five million dollars. Is that right? Because we're putting two million into reserves. Like there's a less than three million dollar difference from revenues and expenses, but then we're going to put an additional two million dollars into reserves. So now we're five million dollars in the hole. At this point, I would request uh, Mr. Tibble to bring the financial statement so that we see exactly. I think she must be talking about statement of operations. Yeah, the next one. Yes. Yeah, right so, there. Yeah. So if you could point to us exactly your question for me to answer. Well, if you look at the first column, it's 2023 operating budget. Yeah. And if you look at the total reserves is 27, and then total expenses is 30. And then under total expenses, at the very bottom, you know, you have your change, but right above your change, two reserves is $2 million. So your change is a minus $5 million. So I'm just wondering, like, the difference between the revenues and the expenses is, you know, not quite three, or maybe just, you know, around the $3 million mark, but then we're putting an additional $2 million into reserves. No, I think, I, I think probably what might be causing confusion, there are two things there. Now, if you're looking at the financial statements, the revenue and the expenses, so you look at uh, total revenue and then you look at total expenses. Mm -hmm. But the ones that you're talking about here, we call them below, below the line in accounting. That is the movement of fund balances, which has nothing to do with the presentation on the first quarter of the financial statements. So if you want to look at uh, the revenue vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the total revenue, you end up at the excess deficiency of revenue over expenses. So if you look at that, the total expenses, we budgeted 27, total revenue, we budgeted 27. We've only received 3 million. That means we're still expecting 24 mm. more to go. When you come to expenses, our total expenses budgeted for so 30 million. Out of that 30 million, we've spent about 7.4 million. So that means we still have 23 more to spend. But now when you come below the line, that is the fund balance movements on the accounting world. So we look at the, the, the repayment of debts. We look at what we are getting from reserves back and forth. But in terms of the actual, if you don't want to look at the fund balances, it's just revenue and expenses that we look at the first quarter. Change. Oh, I see. Sorry. My, I, get, I get it. Thank you. All right. Councillor Sorsen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I think my comment, and it was kind of discussed at this meeting, is the first quarter meeting is very hard to analyze anything because, you know, our income hasn't quite gotten uh, or hasn't received. We just passed our property taxes and so forth. So we're looking forward to quarter two uh, information mm -hmm. <laughs> to give us a better um, picture. All right. Councillor Becker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. That was a very good question by Council McLean. I really appreciated that. And uh, thank you for the answer, John. I'd like to point out to the Council that under the expenses, of course, we have amortization, which is $5.2 million, $5 million. That's not really an expenditure, but it is. It's not money going out. It's just money sitting there that Mr. Orr can throw around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you expect me to comment on that? <laughs> you want me to comment? Well, uh, that's a very good observation, uh, Councillor Beckering. Um, so <laughs> amortization just uh, uh, collects what we'd be calling repairs, wears and tears of our, our, our capital, that is the fixed assets. So we still have to reflect those statements, I mean, those expenses in our uh, operating statements. But in the actual sense, as he says, they are not true picture of uh, money being you know, paid to pay, but it tracks down the wear and tear of our fixed assets. Thank you very much for your comment. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Becker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just in, re in response to that, I find it very ins interesting that you have a $5.2 million amortization under uh, operating budget, which mainly, mainly is capital budget items that are depreciating. Correct, sir? So w when we're balancing uh, the, fin the, the budget, if you recall, uh, when you're balancing our budgets at the uh, during the budget time. We do reflect uh, the amortization, but at the end of the day, we back them out so that you see the actual picture. But in this particular statement, you'll not be seeing what we're discussing. But all in all, amortization tracks down 
the fixed assets repairs, that's the wear and tear of those assets over the years. But when we come to the budget season, we back off amortization. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councillor Firth. Thank you. I just wanted to um, express that I appreciate the opportunity to sit in on audit committee meetings uh, once in a while, so thanks for asking me. Um, I find them very illuminating, even though I had a small heart attack when I saw that our net financial assets was uh, negative $500,000, but <laughs> then Mr. Orwa kindly explained that it is the first quarter and not to panic, and so as I, I trust his judgment, um, I, I calm down a little bit. And I also really like the pie chart because that really, uh, that helps, that, that helps me to process the numbers. It makes more sense in my brain than the rows of numbers. So thank you for the opportunity. If you could take it up a little bit, what Councillor Fath has just talked about. Because some people like looking at the numbers, some people like visual, so whatever is preferable. Those are just breakdown of what we've just been talking about at the top, but if you want in details, then we now try to start separating, you know, expenses in terms of percentages. That's the revenue, and then when you go to the next one, we again separate, you know, um, the expenses as well, so that you see which area takes the biggest chunk. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Let's get everything covered. All right, uh, no motion required, so we will move on to item 7.5, information for council. Mr. Thibault. So there wasn't much on this one. It's the, um, the medals report that council has all seen in the past. <clears throat> and um, this is his quarterly statement, so council is actually quite up to date on this information already, but it gets put into the package um, because we do receive a quarterly report from uh, Mr. Bergen on the medals. So if there's any questions, um, feel free. If not. All right. Thank you. Any questions arising? Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, um, how long it's going to be until that last mobile home is ready and available uh, for sale? Um, I haven't talked to Mr. Bergen since about the middle of last week. Last we knew, it was probably about two weeks away from being uh, completed internally so that it can be put onto MLS. Um, and as far as the current status report goes, we have um, a waiver of financing on one of the units that's supposed to expire tonight by nine o'clock, uh, so that we'll know if one of our units has actually been sold or not. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All right, no motion required for that either. Item 7.6, standard items, council requests, Mr. Thibault. Okay, pull over inside here. So the top two, uh, we do have some financials that we'll be discussing uh, later on in the meeting. So for now, I'll call them in progress. And the, the last item for Councillor Firth, uh, Resolution 136, is still in progress. I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in this forum or someplace else, but there was a, a meeting that was attended in Coaldale um, with a fellow that talked about um, some revitalization ideas in their downtown. And uh, I know there was a few members here that attended. I think Mayor Prokop, Councillor Firth, for sure. And Councillor Rudd came, okay. And um, economic development, I know Amy was there as well. So uh, there was some takeaways from that, but uh, at this point, we're still in progress. So the floor is councils to add, should there be something to add. All right, thank you. Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just had um, a follow-up question with what Councillor Red had asked about the pavement around the golf course. Is that being done this season? Uh, yep, the contractor has been um, acquired. Uh, I don't know what the start date is. Raman, do you have a start date for that? First this week of July, yeah. Okay. And can I have a sure, yeah, second yeah, follow-up? Yeah. I was wondering if we could put a garbage can out by the new Trout Pond Park. Um, just where, like when you come from the dry, or like the parking lot, there's a garbage can over beside like the camping areas, and then there's one that's like way further away. I just feel like 
it would be beneficial to have one kind of near I the know, playground. I know exactly where you're talking about, and yes, I was going to send an email off, which I hadn't done yet. I did a little trout pond sort of walk run this weekend, uh, recognizing that my body is 50 years old, and it is thinking that I'm 50 years old. Um, but I, I did recognize that. With the park there, you're right, there's no, there's no garbage receptacle close to that new playground. Um, and so things will probably end up on the ground. So we will get our parks department to look after installing something probably on the opposite side of the path, I'm thinking. Um, yeah. But somewhere in that neighborhood. Either way, I was just thinking it would be a good idea. Or, yeah. Thanks. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Councillor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had spoken to a resident, and I know we've discussed this in the past, about um, the smell or the odor and taste issues that we have with our water at various points in the year. Usually it's further into the summer, and it has to do with various different things, algae bloom. And, uh, anyway, this year um, we dealt with it much earlier in the spring than we normally do. Um, I understand it was weather-related, um, but this person's question was, if this is happening every year, is there something that can be done to alleviate it? And I believe we've been, we've had it explained that an activated charcoal filter um, is one of those solutions. And so then their question was, well, what would that cost be? Has that been investigated? Um, what would the cost per resident be on the, on the utility bills? Has council uh, contemplated this? Because if it's happening every year and we know it's an issue, are we going to address it or is it worth addressing it? So. Um, I'm bringing it forward, uh, and my intention is to ask administration to investigate uh, the cost of the act of an activated charcoal filter or uh, some other solution to the problem, so that we can contemplate it and with all of the information with the cost of that remedy. All right, thank you. Is that something, Mr. Tebow? Is that something we've used before that you're aware of, or I don't remember? I'm not sure if I remember that coming up exactly like that, but but. Um, so administration, I don't know if it was Councillor Firth or Councillor Somerson, someone forwarded that question to administration, so we're already actively working on that. Um, charcoal filter was something that was mentioned, I believe, by Mr. Egan. Um, so we're looking into that. Uh, there might be other options we're looking into as well, but certainly we can pop it on the standing item list so that it, it gets brought back um, to council, and we'll be working on some kind of whatever that cost looks like. And um, it, it is something that can be mitigated I don't know 100%, but it happens, you know, everywhere. At Red Cliff, it happened. Lethbridge, it happened. Um, but there is ways to mitigate that. So administration will come back with some costing on that. So, so, so All thank right, you. All right, thank you. So being that it started, you don't need an actual motion from Councillor for at well, this stage? Well, we, we could have the motion just so it, it, it gets logged uh, since it was mentioned. But I, I, we were dealing with it through email, but, but that's okay to okay. bring it up through here. It's, uh, Councillor Firth, you know, right, put the motion together. Uh, yeah, yeah I can certainly do that. Yeah, I had forwarded the question via email, and then I just asked if it was more appropriate for me to bring it up in standing items because then everybody on council is aware of it and, and the public are as well. So, um, I would make a motion that council direct administration to investigate uh, an activated charcoal filter or other solution uh, to remedy the odor and taste issues in our water and the cost associated with that solution. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Favor. Carried now, so thank you. Councillor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we had some really good discussion in regards to um, our joint meetings with the um, MD and the chamber, and out of that um, came um, some questions as to if the town can offer some grants, subsidy, subsidies, or other incentives to encourage uh, the building of multi-unit residential buildings in the town. And so I was wondering if we um, can, if I can make a motion um, to come out of Just that. Just to investigate that, if sure. Yeah, if yeah. that's all right. I would like to make a motion to direct administration to investigate possible grants, subsidies, and other incentives to encourage the building of multi-unit residential buildings in the town of Tabor. All right, thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? Councillor Fruth had a question. I just want to speak in support of the motion. I think this is, it is something, it, it's affecting many communities in the area, but um, yeah, I appreciate Councillor Sorensen making the motion and I, I'm in favor. All right, thank you, motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
Councilor Rudd. Yeah, in favor. Just for, for discussion, um, the, the uh, do we not have applications, uh, Mr. Kibo, uh, for the rapid housing initiative? Or are we just still in contemplation of that? We have one application for a rapid housing initiative <clears throat> at this at this time with um, uh, individual modular homes out at the Meadows, oh, that's it, but yeah. there isn't a multi-unit version of that that we've explored at this point. I, not, not that I'm aware of. We don't have anything out there for a multi-unit. Okay. But you, you, you're exploring the multi one along with the, with what's currently being asked for in the grant. No, currently we're only exploring the individual, the individual singular okay. modular homes. Yeah, there's no multi-unit anything that we've explored at this point. All right, okay, thank you. So once again, motion on the table. Councillor Rudd. You're, you're lit up again. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready for the next one. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillor Rudd. Okay, I'd, I'd just like to have a bit of a discussion on uh, when we pave this this new path in July around around the golf course that, you know, um, I'm an avid user of that as I know many are. And uh, so, uh, I think it's going to become more attractive that when it's resurfaced and it, it links in with other trails around town. So I'm thinking, uh, is it about time that uh, we maybe look at uh, some of the safety issues uh, for path usage? And um, uh, what, I'm, what I'm thinking of is, is making a motion that we would look into uh, putting some signage out there that would just be... Uh, you know, a courtesy reminder of how to use the path, what protocols would be, you know, keep to the right, you know, listen, be attentive, and just, just simple reminders like that. Um, the, you know, the protocol for a bike to pass a, pa a, a pedestrian is that the bike approaches from the, the back, signals their presence with a ding or buzz, and then announces um, on your left, that's what's acceptable throughout these public paths, bike paths, all over. And so when you do that here, um, they, they, it doesn't. It's not always as effective because they don't expect it. They don't. They don't know it, and and they just end up panicking and yelling at you as you go by. So um, I think if they were people were notified that that might be one of the protocols, that maybe that would work. So um, I would uh, like to make a motion. And, have administration look into a couple of things, and uh, unless there's any other discussion, uh, Mr. Mayor, or maybe sure, you can go ahead and see if anyone speaks again. Or we'll offer the discussion also, sure. Okay, so I'll I mean, go ahead with the motion. So, um, I'll make a motion that uh, by, uh, council directs administration to consider uh, all mixed use pathways controlled by the town of Tabor, mixed use as bikes and pedestrians. Um, be posted with safety and courtesy signs that provide users with information to avoid collisions or other mishaps, such signs to at minimum dictate what types of equipment may be used, uh, speed and right-of-way protocols. Uh, and alternatively, administration may research uh, developing a bylaw to properly address safety and make a recommendation to council on that. Now, I haven't put anything in there about cost. Um, and perhaps I should. Do that and associated costs. Done. All right. Councillor Beckering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I speak in favor of the, uh, it's not a motion, it's a book that he just said. <laughs> <laughs> I, speak, I speak in favor of it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Councillor Sarson. Okay, it was. Okay, I'll, I'll get to you then for that, but we're still dealing with this, so any other any other discussion on that? Councillor Firth also had a question, I believe. Just a comment that um, I wasn't aware that um, it, it was a problem, uh, so thank you for bringing that to my attention. Perhaps um, an all-ages bike rodeo might alleviate the problem. Everybody could learn together. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mr. Thibault. Uh, administration would just ask that um, Councillor Rudd email that to us because it looked like you were reading it off. It would be it would be appreciated if you could, please. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think he's, he's got that on paper. But <laughs> uh, we do have a motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
In favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. And Councilor Sorensen, you had a unrelated question? Yeah, thank you. It's come to my attention that um, perhaps there's not enough funding to maintain the current dog park, um, maybe with mowing and whatever else um, needs to the general maintenance of the area. Um, I was just wondering <laughs> if administration has any thoughts or if I should make a motion to just look into it. All right, Mr. Thibault, anything to add with that? Um, I would say <clears throat> there's uh, funding for the for the general maintenance of it. I think where the, the non-funding piece that was being discussed was some of the additions or extra that the dog park, um, I, there's not even an official group or a society or anything like that, but they have asked for you know lighting and some extra gravel and some just different things like that, and that's not in our operations budget, so I think that's what you're referring to, Councillor Sorensen. But the regular upkeep and maintenance, um, we do have that that is there, for the mowing and stuff like that, just not some of the extras. And so I know that uh, Recreation has been trying to um, beg, borrow, or wait longingly for <laughs> something to, to be relinquished from another project or something to try and, and, and send things over to the dog park so that's the type of, of items that we don't have funding for yeah just to, to add to that council source uh, the the dog park user group is visible and uh, available on Facebook there is a group uh, they're attached to that and uh, with updates etc and representatives of that group have been to council and our recreation department first and then council with some asks for some enhancements changes improvements uh, and or have also done uh, a share of um, fundraising to improve that uh, that location. So that's generally what's happened in the past. And as uh, Mr. Tebow said, there's not a formal user group with the town, correct, in that regard, which could happen. I think it was actually has been suggested too, has it not, in the last uh, couple of years? I, I think there's been a discussion around it. In other places, there, there are folks that, that pick up on that. Right. So I think that would be helpful. Uh, as it's worked very well with Trail 77, for example, and uh, they've done nothing but uh, enhance that and run with that since they started. So I think that would be a, a great, great next step, and that has been discussed in the past there. So, but that's the general format that uh, we've been exposed to in the last several years, and it's worked pretty well. But it could be improved that way for sure, absolutely. I'll bring it back to the sure. users. Okay, thank you. All right, any other stand item council requests? All right, with that, uh, I just asked to move into the, uh, the meal break until our five o'clock to reconvene delegation. Councilor McLean? <coughs> All right, motion on the table. All in favor? In favor. Carried now, thank you. All right, if we could reconvene the meeting again, please. Uh, on to uh, delegations, item 8.1, 2023 Long Service Volunteer Presentation. Mr. Thiebaud. I see that our long-term service volunteer showed up, so Mr. Mayor, if you could go down to the podium and meet in the middle. Come on up, Roger. Way to go, sir. <laughs> With that, if I could have a motion in that regard also, please. Councilor Firth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the council thanks Mr. Roger Miles as a recipient of the 2023 Volunteer Long Service Award and thanks him for his volunteerism and dedication to the community. 
All right, thank you. Motion on the table. All in favor? Councilor Brown. In favor. Carried unanimously. Thank you. All right. On to item nine media inquiries. Mr. Tibo, anything? There are no media inquiries. None whatsoever. All right, thank you. Uh, then uh, I'd ask for a motion to move into closed session, please. <laughs> Councilor McLean. I move that we move into closed session. All right, motion on the table. All in favor? In favor. Carried now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're recording? No? We are recording internally. In yes. Okay. All right, so item 10.2, Councilor Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion that Council directs administration to upgrade the irrigation district, or ditch, sorry located directly south of the alley behind 38th Avenue South and authorizes an expenditure of up to $50,000 to come from capital reserves. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Favor. All right, Carrie, thank you. Jack, is it in favor? No. He did, yeah. All right, item 10.3, Councillor Firth. Mr. Mayor, I move that Council directs the Mayor and CAO to sign a new agreement with QP for the term of January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2023. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? In favor. Very unanimous. Thank you. And someone to close the meeting? I'll do that. Councilor. Okay, Councilor Bruin. Motion on the table. All in favor? In favor. Very unanimously. Thank you.